So here we are playing Origins still, and the blue player seems absolutely cursed. I just jumped on his turn. He moved into a Golden Age, because he has the energy and the uh, metalworking. Everybody has those requirements. In fact, most of the requirements are held by everyone. The only person who doesn't have their requirements is black. They need a boat, and they don't have that yet. They have to get that out of one of the decks. Uh, they haven't come out in deck one, and as if I remember correctly, deck two is hard to get one point boats from. So black may be drawing from deck one some more. But blue looked at their situation, and they did the enter the golden age, flipped their card over, and bang, they rolled a one back into chaos. Uh, so they take a depopulation. Well, their population is down to the one unit, so that's not an issue. But they fall back into a dark age. Their card flips over. Oh, wait, they're in a golden age. Hold on. They flip into the level three dark age. Not so bad, actually, right? Uh, but it suppresses their card and their turn ends. However, they're now at level 3, and they just have to get their power and their weapon making up, and then they can move into the next Golden Age. They're nowhere near winning, but they're hoping the higher, the higher age value will give them uh, some advantage, because otherwise they, the only thing they were really going to do was steal uh, an Elder off the red player. Chaos is descending everywhere. Uh, Green entered into, uh, played the, stole a card and played it to enter into their own, ooh, and they got one of these, they got a tailor. Uh, but they entered into the second era, but also got hit with chaos, lost one of their pieces up here. Black then drew a level one card. It was an interesting card, would allow an animal uh, increase, and they could have booted this up, but they can't really do the domestication. They would have gotten a free one off of it, but they had nowhere they could take it. They were over here, there's no animals there. So instead they played for a fecundity decrease, moved something down. However, then they too entered into a dark age card got flipped over and they uh, lost one of their units over in Africa. So now we're on the back half of the turn. And on the back half, Red ended up moving into a Golden Age. Um, they didn't need much for it. And now they needed to enter into a Dark Age. They expanded heavily because they've got this Pharaoh card which reduces their chances of it. After that happened, and they expanded it into a position where they could conceivably put Blue under siege and maybe end up enslaving them. And by my understanding of how the rules have to work in this case, they would also get White as slaves at the same time, because Blue slaves are White. And there are no White pieces on the board. So White, rather than being wiped out by this, would exist as part of Red's empire as well. They were obviously, before they did the expansion, even unable to fall into a Dark Age. So they can't advance into Era 3 until they get kind of whatever would normally be an unlucky roll. White, on the other hand, had another had a different kind of problem. They don't want to go into the uh, Golden Age because they had no chance of collapse. They have to get their population up. And they did that. Uh, what they did was they played... Uh, Silk Loom Weaving, which gave them an Elder. It also gives them the eye bonus, but most importantly, perhaps, it gave them uh, a boat advance, which they had to share with Blue because their Blue's symbiote, as it were. Um, they also have gotten their value, though, uh, up to a two with a population expansion which they attacked the red piece 
if they had originally, say, done a baby boom instead, they could have done two population increases and actually had a piece on the board which might help if they wanted to try to fight for freedom. Uh, but right now they're happy with their, their relationship with Blue, actually. So Blue opened up by drawing a card, and they got one of these event cards, or public card combination, public card event combinations, the Muslim Faith. This gives three cultural stars. Now, they don't really care about culture for victory conditions, but it's kind of cool, and it would avoid spending an action they otherwise would have to do to get their one star. Maybe prevent victory points from other people. Let's look to see what the uh, natural event, though, is, because that's perhaps going to influence things. Get a five, which is the greenhouse card, Parkland and Jungle Change. Okay, that means all the green spaces are now not habitable. Now, if we have anyone who's affected by that, something gives you insecticide. I don't remember what it is. It's not at this level. Okay, so let's look at green spaces and see if anybody's sitting on any. Oops, there goes a red piece. Okay, well, one piece was lost, but all the green spaces are unable to be inhabited and I believe unable to move through, too, by normal means. Uh, I think so. I'm looking... Jungle during giant... That's not helpful. I don't remember what gives the ability to move through it. Pesticides. Jungles are habitable. I remember them being impassable, though. And this is the problem. I can't find the impassability. Uninhabitable, uninhabitable. That doesn't tell you impassable. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. And this says, except for metropolises with pesticide which isn't quite what that seems to say. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're not going to hit level 5 anytime soon. So, that was the effect of the event there. And I seem to remember that, that you can't even pass through them. Oh. Okay, so now comes the bidding. And here's the thing. Uh, both green and white want this, and they are letters N and H. So N is going to win unless A wants it. I think A is going to take it. It's a cool card. Uh, it gives him the acculturation ability. And now he gets a stability roll, which given his luck he'll fail. No, oh, he succeeds. And now he'll actually get to do some population actions, which can include acculturation. He gets two actions. Everybody's inferior to him. He can only take one thing. Who does he think's in the lead? That's really the problem here. Um, he thinks Red's in the lead, so he's going to steal an Elder from Red. For whatever reason, these don't even have to be adjacent or anything, which I think's a little weird. I think it should have to be adjacent, but whatever. Um, and now he has one more action, and I think, see, it's painful to push a person onto the board, because that's going to put him towards the Dark Age, but I feel like he really has to, so... Too much chance of losing and becoming enslaved. Is enslaved that bad, though? I think he's not going to do the extra action. Although, he could get more elders if he did. Alright. Ooh, I forgot the cost. This has a cost of dropping him one. That's kind of a bonus. 
because he can actually do that extra action without losing one. And what's he going to want to do in order to get a person? Silver gives him an elder. Tin gives him a metal working. That sounds cool. So one, two, three, four. He's going to place himself near the tin mines. Unless biofuel gives him energy, which he wants. But he also wants metal working. Mm. Energy allows him to start doing plants, though, which can increase his footprint, which... <laughs> now you're starting to see he doesn't have enough energy to do the biofuel, though. Uh, right? Because it's got a minus one on it. The tin's got a plus one, which makes it more likely to fit him. So he's going to go for the tin mines instead. All right, I'm going to move on to the green player. Sorry for taking so much time on him. It just was an interesting little action. Green also moved into a golden age, and then for population they expanded into uh, further into Australia and attacked the red unit that was here. And then black stole the boat card and took that. They really want uh, boats in order to get to golden age. They can do that next turn. Then they did population actions, which might be a problem. That might throw them into chaos next turn and prevent them... Uh, well, they can slip into the Golden Age and then slip into Chaos, so that's fine. But they expanded upward into the northern areas, kind of threatening where blue is, and maybe a little bit of red. All right, on to the back end again. Red went for a draw from the second deck as well, and picked up the Ziggurat, which allows him to do, or which will allow people to do urbanization uh, regardless, which means they can just... Uh, Migra uh, convert into a city anywhere, whoever gets this as a population action. That's a po very powerful action actually, uh, as opposed to the other one, the silver back, which I'm just not that thrilled with to tell you the truth. Uh, the only yeah, it's hard to tell what it does because it moves your fecundity up so you get more population actions so that you increase your risk of chaos but it gives you a plus two to your stability, which decreases your chance of chaos. So it'll mix the one turn. And then after that, your chance of chaos goes up. It could be useful. I just, I, I don't see it. Uh, okay. So, for the ziggurat, the first thing we have is the random effect. And let's see what that is. It's a one. It's the Dan's guard. This is which one? The desert. Okay, so we're back to savannas, which means the yellow areas are habitable again. What are these? No oh, those are the die roll numbers. Cool. Okay. So that's the first effect. The deserts have cleared up. Now, for the second, uh, red only had one, draw one action they could take, so they have to play this card for bidding. They don't have any points to bid on it, uh, but other people do. And who are those other people who do? Well, one of them, and the top one is actually blue. He's got a red elder he could expend, yeah, that he borrowed, and that would guarantee him it. Does he want this? He likes that urbanization ability, but it doesn't seem hugely valuable. The question is, how valuable is his elder? Well, he could use it for bids that are useful to him. This one isn't, it's not going to trump his power. I think he's going to hold on it. H, H wants stars. He's got a bid. He'll take it. Can he? He cannot. It's a level 2 card. He doesn't have an eyeball. He can't have it. What about C? C is black. C is level one. He's got an eyeball, though. He wants stars. He's buying it. His card. Other people? Yeah, they could have tried to steal it. This was the big question. Did A want to try to prevent somebody else from getting it? Uh, namely black. Because black already has another two stars here. And that's four victory points they've collected already. Uh which puts them, I'm not sure, 
It's the number of spaces or the number revealed that counts. Hard to remember how to win. Uh, public card ranks. Total is added to innovation and population numbers. So his number would be 4 and 4 is 8. Whereas this guy's at 7, 8, 9. Uh, green. Who, who drew this? <laughs> Good question. It had to be white. Okay. Uh, so that... No, it couldn't be white. That was... Hey, other people can bid on this. Hold on. Green could bid on this. He's level one. It's a level two card, and you're allowed to do that. This is not level one. It's level two. Okay, green wants this. So he'll take it instead. I'm sorry about that. It's got a good power. It's got some victory points. He wants that. That puts him to five, six points. Over here, we're looking at three points. Here, we're looking at four, five, six points. Red's at six, seven, eight points right now. Yeah. And white is sitting at one, Two, three, four points. Which is the problem with slavery. A lot of your, you can't have tokens all over the map. Okay. We're in the middle of White's turn. Uh, White gets to make a stability roll. Now, this isn't... He actually wants to move into a Golden Age at some point. That couldn't have been a White draw. That was Red's draw. Okay. Red wants to make a stability roll. And he kind of wants to fail. Now he has to add two to his roll. Four. He gets the chaos he was looking for. I'll finish up and come back after that. So Red, of course, slipped into the Dark Age at era three, which for him is doubt. Uh, that flipped his cards over, ended his turn, killed off a lot of his empire. White chose to enter the Golden Age, Hope to roll low enough. They didn't. Uh, for a population action, though, they had two of them. So they were able to attack black. And they did, couldn't use the boat. So stealing the card wouldn't really help much. So they attacked again and put a piece on the map. Now, if there's a, uh, an end to the blue slavery for whatever reason, which there would be if a Dark Age is entered, for example... Um, then white will be back in play. Right now they're still slaves, though. They just have slave pieces. But they're still marked as slaves as being under the blue piece over here. All right, I'm going to load this up. And I think, uh, I think the way I'm handling slavery is working correctly. Nobody's getting knocked out of the game completely or never going to be able to return. There's no weird teleporting or anything like that that might be implied in some of the uh, fact answers. And it doesn't look like it is. And this seems to actually be in conformance to everything that's been said <laughs> about the game by the designer. So maybe it's the right way to play.